Well, here we are on YouTube, and here you are joining us wherever you're joining us from. Ryan, how are you doing? Great, Nathan. How are you doing today? I'm feeling pretty good. So I, I good. see we're doing some more some more television. Television, <laughs> yeah. This is another request from a Patreon request from uh, one of our faithful supporters of our channel. And I guess Richard likes what we do. So thank you, Richard, for supporting our channel financially with your request. He wants us to do more television, I guess, because we enjoyed what we heard. And I remember quite enjoying it, don't you? Like, I think yeah. we were quite... I remember surprised. apprehensively thinking, mm -hmm. this is yeah. going to be good. And yeah. then en ending up liking it, yeah. Yeah, it was quite fun. I love the name of that television. <laughs> what a funny name. It'd be like naming your band today, smartphone. But... Uh, <laughs> It's not a bad band name, actually. Yeah, actually, there you go. All right, so again, just a reminder, Nathan, Television is an American rock band from New York City. They were most notably active in the 70s. Uh, they're considered rock, art punk, art rock, post-punk, proto-punk. So that is their uh, kind of their shtick or their sound. Um, yeah, so they're still presently active, I guess, performing. They took a break for many years. I suspect they just do a lot of, you know, greatest hit stuff and tours, you know, mm -hmm. gigs. And so good for them. Okay. So uh, here we go. Uh, this There's not much else to say regarding this request. <laughs> Richard, I like his style. He's an older gentleman, I think. I think he's older than us. I could be wrong with his taste in music and what have you. But I think he's older than us. Mm -hmm. And I like he just gave us a request and nothing to say. Just listen and enjoy. So these are three songs in a row. He did his three requests all together from the same band that's totally legit. And uh, here we go. More television. The band is called Television. And for you young kids, just sit back, relax, and enjoy some television. All right. <laughs> three songs. So first one is Venus. Three songs. Marquee okay. and then Marquee Moon. And then now, for some reason, that Marquee Moon seems familiar. Did we not do that one already? But maybe not. Good question. Just... I I'll, I can find out uh, while we're listening. But yeah, go ahead and Kay. hit play. All right, here we go. Here we go.
Okay, so the reason why you remember the name Marque Moon is because that's the name of the album. Yeah, I, I once okay. I saw okay. the picture, I was like, oh, right. Yeah, yeah and we, we haven't done that song yet. No, uh, we did the song. Oh, I just had it. Sorry, now. Let me see if I can remember. I think it was Elevation. Elevation, right. Elevation. That was the first song on side two. So this is the second song on side one is Venus. Uh, again, I'm just looking at the retrospective professional reviews of this album. All perfect scores, Nathan. Hmm. Yeah, it's a perfectly scored record. Um, and it, it, you might remember this. Listening to this song, I was like, boy, this sounds like old R.E.M. Like it triggered my brain. Oh, really? And then I went and said, yeah, and there you go. R.E.M.'s Michael Stipe said that this is his uh, second favorite album of all time, only next to Patti Smith's Horses. So oh, Michael wow. Stipe, this is his second favorite album of all time. Uh, the guitarist Will Sargent, who plays for Echo and the Bunnymen. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've done some yeah. of their stuff. Great stuff. They were a lot of fun. He also says this is one of his favorite records and is a major influence on his playing, the guitar work on this album. And again, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers' John Frusciante. Mm -hmm. This is one of his favorite albums of all time. So, <clears throat> very interesting. A... I, I... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I just felt, I felt like there's a lot of different sounds coming from that that mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, that kind of reminds me of this. It reminds me of that. All right. Like... Uh, uh, Tom Petty, for example, a little bit. Yes, I heard of Tom Petty, early Tom um, Petty, yep. Wow. Rolling Stones. Um, mm. Yeah, it had kind of a, what was the other band that it was reminding me of? Yeah, you can see that, that like you say, a lot of people, um, you, may, you know, maybe think of this song uh, or think of this band as as an influence on their music, so. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's just kind of like we wouldn't have known about the. <laughs> no, there's no way. There's no way I would have stumbled on Television's debut album. So yeah, <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of great guitar. I love the guitar or that picking. I don't know what they call it. The single note playing that happens mm -hmm. throughout the whole song. It's, it sounded a little bit like uh, "Sweet Child of Mine," like the okay. the beginning lick on "Sweet Child of Mine." You know how it starts out the very recognizable new, 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 new. yeah that's yeah. fair yeah 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 for sure uh yeah this, i mean this is a very easy listen i mean we mentioned before that we love to hear the whole album but it looks like what richard's doing is like what we've said is like we're not doing album reviews anymore mm -hmm. so he's given us uh, key tracks he probably thinks we should hear from his album it's my guess but he didn't say like i said yeah. he just said listen to these songs he actually didn't even say that he just said songs <laughs> <laughs> and not so many words these songs all right so the next song we're gonna listen to is title mark track. a moon the title track it's a 10 minute song Ooh. and it was also released as a single which i would suspect they must have had a radio cut but who knows back in the 70s it might have been more things were know, pretty maybe, free and loose in the 70s yeah maybe this is like on college stations or whatever you know like mm. not really like the casey Kasem type stations but but however it was released as a single so here we go okay yeah. all right here we go I've got the lyrics up on this one. I wasn't ready for the other one, but I've got it up on this one. Oh, you hear chili peppers there. Holy yeah. smokes. Holy smokes. Wow.
hesitating
bass again. Oh, uh, it's great. It's great. It's like live in the studio. This is, they just record live in the studio and release the album. There's a there's a ton of genres coming out of this. Yeah, sure, when, sure. When you start thinking about where this these are all like starting off points, I think for a lot of of bands and a lot of uh, genres, because mm. like uh, you could argue that that has a bit of punk in it, mm-hmm. right? You can argue that that's got um, like there's prog there for sure. It's, it's yeah, like a little, a little bit, a little bit, yeah, not, a little bit, yeah. but it's not like it's not like it's, not like, it's just. You can hear some of those influences of, of prog right. into it, and and not enough to overtake it. I think that's what what I think is great about mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah. So I just I guess I what I, I I get from listening to the this is that for a number of bands this was their kind of like touchstone. This is their like mm-hmm. I, I started with this band and then you know took what they started and, and kept going because I don't know how much longer uh, television was around for. Right. You know, I think they did a few albums, yeah. Did they? Okay. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, you keep going, I'll look it up here. Yeah, I guess I'm, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm hearing through the music is this, that this is a, a jumping point for, for so many different bands. Just this, three, the, just three studio albums, that's it. Just three, hey? And is this the. So they had a short, this is the f- debut album. This is the debut album, okay. Yeah. And from what I gather, I, this is like their successful one. This is the most successful one. Probably, yeah. I would say this is yeah. their most. This is the one that's. Yeah, they released one like a year later, then another one in '92, and that's it. Oh, okay, way later. Yeah, yeah. So um, interesting legacy, though. That's what I mean. This is. Uh, yeah, I guess it's one of those bands where they just did a couple great, amazing albums, and then they just that's what they've lived off of. There's there's times when you're listening to it when it sounds like. Oh, that's pretty simple. Like, like when they're just doing like neat, 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 like just the two right. notes back and forth, where you're kind of like, oh yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And mm. then like, th- there's there's other parts where you're like, wait a second, it's not just this simple little guitar riff. They're they're playing around with a lot of things. Um, kind of reminded me of Fish actually. Like I was thinking the same thing. I I thought of Fish too. Yeah, I did think of Fish too. Yeah, boy, you're seeing all the things I was thinking. Okay, keep going. Yeah, no. Take it from there. I, I'll. Well, I just I, I think Fish must know about this because th- their first half of the song sounded like what almost like a Fish song does, in, mm-hmm. in, like what it, kind of simple on studio. What I mean is like the, mm-hmm. their studio versions, and then what they do with the last part of their songs live is they just take it somewhere else. Yep. <laughs> and I feel like that's what the song is doing. It's kind of it, it's showing the future Fish guys because they weren't around in '77. I don't think. Boy, I know they've been around for a while, but I don't think they're a '70s band. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, they probably heard this and that idea of let's take a song and then the last part of the song, let's take it wherever it goes. And I felt like there's two songs here. Mm-hmm. And then they circle back like Fish does to that original sounding part of the song at the end of when they close it. Yeah. So, yeah. so it could be a great formula. Dead influence because Fish sure. is obviously... Oh, cr- right. right. The grandchild or the that, child yeah. of... The, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. I want to say that I knew the song was quote unquote long. It's ten minutes, but I was like, this song's gonna do something, and it did that. That ending, the guitar solo, the drums, the bass line that was going. It, it's so much going on for a nineteen seventy seven song. I really just, I just like the way it sounds. I just miss that acoustic sound of. You, you could tell this is like recorded live. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now this might have been their fifth or sixth take. I don't know, but this is the band playing together live in studio. You can tell that, and it's, it just sounds fantastic. And I just miss those days of bands. 
getting together in the studio and playing and recording and yeah, not sending in their parts separately and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the last song on this trio of requests sorry. is called, uh, what's it called again? Guiding Light. Guiding Light. Oh, there it is. Oh, sorry. My bad. Okay. Okay. Here goes. Did Ellie make those cuts? We're going to have to ask her. Yeah. The, wow. If she did, I got to give her a raise. <laughs> Another raise. She did. She just told us in the chat. Okay, well, I'm going to give you a raise. I'm going to give you praise. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's right. We said a praise. Praise. A praise. Don't like stones. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah.
<laughs> All right. Okay, that last song, for some reason, like, and I, I've heard it in the other two, but this one kind of, there's something about his voice that I, I'm i not a big fan of. Oh, really? I, 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 I really like the music. The musical side of it is actually the part that I think is like, this is, un, like, I haven't heard this before. Something about his voice, though, it sounded almost too much like Mick Jagger. And, and I'm not a huge fan of Mick Jagger's voice, by the way. Um, I just, as I'm listening to it, I'm like, I'm trying to imagine another singer doing this. And I would go, I think I'd like it more if the voice, if the tonal quality was a little better. But I, sure. I, and I know the big fans of television are going to be like, that's the best part. It's because it's so unique and different. Okay, great. It just, I, I'm not like, whoa, this, uh, this, this voice, I'm, I'm not endeared to the voice. The music sure. I enjoyed. I really like the, the, the like guitar solo there at the end where you like, you know, nice, like just very like soothing guitar solo. The, um, the drums actually had a kind of a unique little, uh, thing going on. It wasn't just your standard, you know, right. four beats. Um, but something about the voice, it was just like, it was not, it was not engaging me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you sure. I, I get it. I don't disagree with you. I mean, of course it's your opinion. I don't mean to say it like that. What I mean is like, uh, I understand why you'd say that. Uh, I think it's almost irrelevant. Mm. I think mm -hmm. maybe like the Stones, it's not about Mick Jagger's voice. It's about his presence on stage, the way he dances and does his little dance, and he's like, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. "Stop me up!" You know, does a, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you know, he, you know, he's got that that he's a performer, right? That, that he's a performer. <laughs> so, I think this guy, and I'm sorry, I had his name right here in front of me. My apologies, Richard Lloyd. So he's also the guitarist, though. Okay. So I think that's the pass. Mm. He's not just the singer. So I think, okay. like, I think he's focusing on the guitar sounds. Mm. Mm -hmm. He's the guitarist. Everything we're hearing is coming from him, guitar-wise. Because the other guys is bass guitar, drums, and uh, well, I guess Tom Verlaine as well does guitar work as well. So maybe a bit of both. So he and does I, the solo work. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, that's I'm just saying that in a perspective of, I don't think. Uh, Fish has great singers either. No, they're, they're okay, but they're that's like that's the, what I meant. It's it's irrelevant. It just, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's 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 another instrument in the in the song. So you're yes. like, it's not the best bass playing I ever heard, but it's a, it functions for the song. So I think the yeah. singing is the same way. I think it's a functionary to the song. So yeah. you're right. Um, I don't mind it because I actually don't mind Mick Jagger's style singing. I don't consider him a great vocalist in that sense, but I think it fits the Stones, and I think mm. Richard Lloyd fits the tone of these songs yeah. and uh so he yeah he does the he actually does the solo work on marquee moon and on elevation and on guiding light so he's definitely hmm. he's probably the band i think he formed the band as well so that's really cool so i mean all in all i i, lo I love the 70s ballads i love them <laughs> i love the sound of those ballads and a great outro with the keyboards with the guitar solo at the end it's it it tugs at my 70s heartstring. I just love the sound of it. So that gets a, like a big pass already. And it's just amazing to listen to this unique, different, or uh, kind of a, a, really a, a debut album. Like I said, perfect scores with the critics. Uh, influenced a lot of artists that you and I enjoy. I'm a huge R.E.M. fan, and Michael Stipe is a huge fan of this album. So cool. that kind of fits. Like if a band that I'm a big fan of is a big fan of an album that I might like the album too, if I like their music. So, yeah. and Chili Peppers as well. So the same idea. So I get it. So I, I like that. I, I kind of like that we're listening to the influences of bands that we liked and we didn't, uh, Richard probably didn't know that when he gave us this album to listen to. So that kind of history or that, you know, what, what were our musical heroes listening to when they were teenagers? So that's kind of, and younger. So that's cool. Yeah. I yeah. like that. All right. Can we, can we circle back to something? Of course. You, you have seventies heartstrings. Is that, does that make sense? Did I say the wrong thing? <laughs> no. Did I? Oh. He's like, it tugs at you know my 70s I mean? heartstrings. I'm like, yeah, oh. it pulls at my 70s heartstrings. You know, my love of the 70s sound. I love the yeah. studio not, aesthetics. Not my of, 80s ones, not my 90s ones. Oh, not right. I, I have, I have some in every, I have some in the 70s. I don't think I go really into the 60s, but definitely my love of music and music in general is the 70s and above. It really starts to kick in, right? And, I know. I'm just I mean, gonna, every decade has some great stuff. I'm like, well, the Beatles were 60s, but you get what I'm saying. All right. Would you? All right. <laughs> Thank you, Richard, so much. I think this is the, I think this is the, uh, the good Richard. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> the good Richard. <laughs>
This is the dick I like. Okay, all right. So <laughs> the good dick. All right. Why do well, I always ruin everything? I'm sorry. I don't know it's like we're kind of flowing. It's because I started making fun of you. Yeah. <laughs> my deflection. It's my deflection. <laughs> Thank you, Richard, so much. Thanks for being a good, a good dick. <laughs> Thanks for being the good dick. Thanks yeah, for. We for everyone else joining us on Twitch and on uh, Discord and on Patreon, and if you want to be a member, hey, look us up. We've got uh, quite a quite a extensive library, so check it out, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>